From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Deller. Dave Elwood, Johnny, Northwest Surety. Oh, hiya, Dave. How's the family? Oh, growing like weeds. You wouldn't even recognize them. I guess not. It's been a long time. Say, uh, you free at the moment, Johnny? Well, there's nothing going on here except the rent. What's on your mind? I don't know exactly. Maybe smoke, maybe a fire. I got a girl here in you the office. You executives really live. Well, she's pretty enough to... Say, why don't you come on over here and meet her? Social, or do I get paid for it? You get paid. Uh-huh. J. Dollar, gigolo, personal attention to lonely hearts, special Lonely rates. hearts? Why'd you say that? Say what? Lonely hearts. I don't know. Why? Is it a code of some kind? Well, you could call it that, I guess. What's it mean? Johnny, if this girl is telling the truth, it means murder. Tonight, and every weekday night, Bob Bailey in the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. From Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Home Office, Northwest Surety Company, Hartford, Connecticut. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the Lonely Hearts matter. Item one, a dollar and sixty cents taxi fare from my apartment to the Northwest Surety Building in the office of Dave Elwood, executive claims adjuster. A hard-working little man with thinning hair who, even after twenty years in the game, still couldn't help making every claim a personal matter. He met me in the outer office and led me off to one side. She's waiting inside there, Johnny. I wanted to brief you before you met her. Who is she, Dave? Her name is Norma Wells. She's from Chicago. She flew in from there this morning. Hasn't had any sleep. and She's pretty upset. Mm -hmm. What about? Her father died three days ago. Suddenly, unexpectedly. What did he die of? Acute enteritis, supposedly. Well, the death certificate hasn't been signed yet. Is that what you meant by murder? Well, his daughter thinks so. Mm -hmm. Was he insured with you? $50,000, term life, written five months ago. Who's the beneficiary? This daughter? No, his wife. Uh, his second wife, that is. The girl's mother died years ago. Wells remarried a month before the policy was issued. A woman named Mabel Burke. The insurance is payable to her. And the Wells girl thinks she killed him. That's what she says. She's pretty mixed up. Why did she come here? And I'm not quite sure, Johnny. Suppose you ask her. Okay, let's go. This way. What about that... Lonely Hearts crack you made on the phone. Well, that's how he met this new wife, this Mabel Burke, through a Lonely Hearts club. Like they say, marriage is a lottery. In this case, it sounds more like Russian roulette. Yeah. In here. Miss Wells, this is Johnny Dollar. He's a specialist, an expert in this kind of thing. I'm sure he'll be able to help you. How do you do, Mr. Mr. Dollar? Miss Wells. Now, I'm going to leave you two alone. I have a couple of things i got to take care of. You just punch the intercom if you want me. Right, Dave. Thanks. Would you, uh, would you care for a cigarette, Miss Wells? No, thank you. I... Yes, yes, I will, too. I... Oh, please forgive me. I... I just can't seem to think straight. Oh, that's perfectly understandable. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Dollar. Sure. Forgive me for being so blunt, but when was the last time you had something to eat? Why... Why, yesterday morning, I, I guess. Uh -huh. Dave. Yes, Johnny? Suppose you could send out for a glass of orange juice, a hot roll, a pot of coffee? Oh, sure. I'll have one of the girls go get it. Good, thanks. No, no, please. I, I really could You're really going to, though. You're shaking so hard you can hardly hold on to that cigarette. I know. It's so stupid of me. You and your father were pretty close, I imagine. Yes. Until he married her. What kind of a woman is she? Well, she's strange. It's hard to explain. She's... She's sort of vague, fuzzy around the edges, if, if that makes any sense. It, it's like she isn't even there sometimes, but, but away off somewhere in, in, in time or space. A little batty, is that what you're implying? No, no, not really. She could be as sharp as a tack when she wanted to. But something about her. Well, I was scared of her, Mr. Dollar. And I don't actually know why. I see. My father and I could never be alone. Somehow she always managed to be there, separating us, driving us apart. Did she ever say anything that would lead you to believe that? She didn't have to. Just being there was enough to... All right, I know what you're thinking. Father fixation, second wife, jealous daughter, neurotic imagination. It's a possibility, isn't it? No. Don't you suppose I thought of that? Made allowances for it? 
Do you think I'm a fool? I, I, I don't know what to think, Miss Wells. You told Dave Elwood you believed your stepmother had murdered your father. And so far, the only reason you've given is the fact that she was around all the time. Maybe he wanted her around. Maybe that's why he married her. Of course he wanted her around. That's not what made me suspicious. Then what did? The fact that he took out life insurance, named her as beneficiary? Not at the time. I wasn't suspicious at all, Mr. Dollar. Not until... until the night he... he died. Oh, I... I was hurt, yes, and... and I felt out of place, so... Well, I moved out of the house three months ago and took an apartment off the loop. But I... I didn't have the slightest idea she might be planning to kill him. Did he carry any insurance before they were married? Some protection for you in case of... Uh... Oh, no, he, he didn't feel that it was necessary. He, he'd set up a trust fund, and, and there are some bonds and so on that I suppose will come to me. I see. No, the policy was entirely her idea. Thinking back, it, it seems to me she started talking about insurance the first week after they were married... And he finally gave in. If he hadn't, I... I think he'd still be alive. Mm -hmm. Just what were the circumstances of his death? I don't know. I wasn't there. She saw to that. What do you mean? Well, he was taken ill suddenly. In the middle of the night. He wanted her to call me, but she wouldn't do it. Why not? She claimed she didn't think it was anything serious. So there was no need of it. Instead, she called the doctor. Her doctor. A few minutes after he arrived, my father died. Then they called me. After it was all over. This doctor, is he the one who has refused so far to sign a death certificate? Oh, he was going to sign it all right. Until I got there and kicked up a scene. An obvious case of acute enteritis, he called it. Then he backed down. Decided maybe he should have another opinion. I went to father's doctor. But he said there was nothing he could do because he hadn't been called in at the time. He's the one who suggested I come here. Why so? He said the insurance company would help me. Since they were involved, too, they'd advise me what to do. Well, uh, what did he think about that diagnosis, acute enteritis? He said, he said it was possible, but extremely doubtful. He knew father's physical condition. He treated him for years. Mm. How long had your father known this Mabel Burke before they were married? Less than a month. He'd answered a Lonely Hearts ad in the paper. So I found out later by accident. Oh, I see. We both seemed embarrassed by the way they'd met. Was it a private ad or an organization? A club of some sort. The Rendezvous Club. They have an office on Atlantic Avenue. Mr. Dollar, it's not just imagination. Father's own doctor feels there's something wrong, too. That's why he sent me here. I'm not crazy. Easy now, easy. She killed him for his insurance. I know she did. Maybe, maybe. But there's not much to go on. Not at the moment, anyway. Think it's about time for a coffee break? Yeah, I imagine it's a little past time for Miss Wells. I couldn't. Really, I... Oh, yes, you could. Yes, you could. Go ahead now. Dig in. I'll be back in a few minutes. Have a word with you, Dave? Right, Johnny. Well, what do you think? I think it needs some looking into how soon can you get Miss Wells and me on a plane for Chicago? An hour and a half. I've already checked. Good. I'll have her get a court order for an autopsy in case the coroner hasn't already asked for one. And we'll take it from there. Then you think the girl is telling the truth? I wouldn't bet on it. <laughs> Expense account item two, $96.40. Transportation from Hartford and taxi tips and incidentals in Chicago. I dropped Norma Wells at her apartment, checked in at a hotel, and phoned the coroner's office. I learned that an autopsy request had been filed, but was being delayed pending a court order. I informed them that the daughter was available and willing now to cooperate with them. I left my name and asked the office to keep in touch with me. Item three, two dollars and ten cents. Taxi to the offices of the Rendezvous Club. Introductions arranged, mail forwarded, lonely hearts mended, and possibly murders planned. Well, hello. I must be in the wrong place. What do you mean? I mean, I, I can't see you as the lonely type. Oh, I'm not. I mean, I'm not a client. I work here. Really? For some reason, I'd always had the idea that these clubs were run by sweet old ladies of 75 or so. Oh, well, I don't exactly run it. Or at least I don't own it, if that's what you mean. Hey, you're not a client, for gosh sake. Any rules against it? Well, no. Well, how do I go about it? 
I mean, becoming a client. Well, you either write in or come in like you are now. Then you fill out a form, tell all about yourself, and attach a photograph. Mm. And... Look, Buster, there's no use trying to kid you. Huh? We don't have a woman in our files under 45 years old. Well, maybe I got a mother complex. What? So I uh, fill out a form. Uh, what do you do with it then? Well, we'll keep it on file. Then we send out bulletins to the active members and forward letters back and forth. Or you can come in here and be introduced. And... Look, are you serious? Don't I act serious? Well, I don't get it. A young guy with your looks and... I bet you're selling something. No, no. As a matter of fact, I uh, just got in town and I'm trying to locate a certain fellow. I... I was told he's a member of your club. Oh, well, why didn't you say so? What's his name? Jonathan Wells. He probably got his address. Jonathan Wells? Yeah. Have you got a file on him? Who are you? You're with the police. Police? Now, what gives you that idea? Well, I don't know anything about the man you're looking for. No? Well, uh, suppose we check through the file. It's not here. We don't keep the files here. Where do you keep them? They're not here. Well, uh, maybe they're in the next office. Through that door there. No, you can't go in there. Relax now. Take it easy. You have no right in there. I won't let you oh, go. No. Oh, you stop now, it. Now, you just stand right up there on that desk and stay out of trouble. Let me down. Who do you think you are, anyhow? You get out of here. You go get a warrant if you want to. Who was in here? Nobody. Do you smoke cigars? Of course I don't smoke yeah, cigars. Yeah, right there in the ashtray, still burning. Somebody just sneaked out through that door in the hall. Who was he? What's your name? Tetler. Fanny Tetler. How long have you worked here? A year. Hey, I've got a hunch you're not a policeman. I didn't say I was. What about Wells? Have you got a file on him? No. What happened to it? I don't know what you're talking about. How about, about Mabel Burke? Mabel Burke. Have you got a file on her? Of course not. What do you mean, of course not? She and Wells met through this club. Look, Buster, Mabel Burke owns this club. Now, here's our star to tell you about tomorrow's intriguing episode of this week's story. Tomorrow... Another day, another husband, another death, and a sweet little old lady rocks and smiles. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by Les Crutchfield, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Roy Rowan speaking.